Please be seated. What a powerful little story that is. We just read from the gospel about Jesus uh, in the temple. And he's, he's just watching people go in and out. And uh, almost like people watching. That's what it says he's doing. He's watching people. And there must have been uh, some kind of a container for people to put their gifts in. Uh, there were gifts for the temple and to the temple. And he watched a lot of people come and go. And he said there were a lot of pretty wealthy people who put in a lot of money. And then this one woman attracts his attention. And it doesn't say how he knew this. But all it does, the story just tells you that she was not married any longer because her husband had died. And of course, as you know, in ancient times, uh, the woman got all of her resources from the husband. So when the husband dies, uh, she is completely destitute, completely, uh, he has to either go back to her family somehow, or she goes on the street. In any case, she's in dire straits. And it says that she had these two little copper pieces of metal, copper coins, and in our translation it says they're worth about a penny. And it says that it's all that she had to live on. And she drops them in the, the collection plate for the temple, which obviously struck Jesus in a pretty powerful way. So he calls all of his students around. He says, you know, of course, because she gave out of what even she didn't hardly have. Uh, she gave much more uh, than the people who gave a lot of money out of their abundance, their extra money. And for her, there was no discretionary fund. <laughs> this was not a discretionary act. So, pretty powerful things. And just to be real direct about it, the, the two things I wanted, that I drew from the story I wanted to share with you. One is the, um, it, it seems pretty clear that because this was all she had to live on, that when she gives this money to the temple in Jerusalem, um, following the, the rules of her faith and her commitment to her faith, following what she's supposed to do, and in a sense giving to God from uh, out of her poverty, she's really giving from the, the center <laughs> Uh, the center of her life. Or, in, I thought of it in these terms, she's giving it from the center of her budget as if she had a budget. It's not the last thing on her budget, it's the f first thing on her budget. Which is really interesting. Uh, the way, uh, uh, some people love budgets, I'm not that great at them. I always get, I feel guilty for not following them. Every couple months I write one down in my, on my computer at home. And it kind of reminds me of what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not, I don't really spend that much money, but I don't follow it to the letter all the time. The treasurer here is really good. Bill sitting right up here. He says, don't call it a budget, call it a spending plan. <laughs> Here's how I plan to spend my money. But for the woman that Jesus saw at the top or the center of her spending plan, she says, I'm going to uh, give to my faith and to the temple and to God. Uh, it was on the top of the list, even if she didn't have enough for other things. And the translation at the very end, I've heard other preachers talk about this. They said she gave out of her poverty, out of all she had to live on. And I don't want to push it too far, but it just means, uh, let's just say she has no discretion. And so it was at the top of her list. Now, that's pretty challenging to me. 
You know, and I, I never do guilt sermons. I really don't. I, but some things when you read in the text in the Bible, they are challenging. They do make you think, at least. And so, like on my computer, um, I've, I do a lot of bill paying by uh, automatic draft. And they send me the reply to my email saying that we just paid your light bill or whatever it is, my mortgage. And so on my computer, I have a list of all the bills so I can move the email into the right slot, right? So there's the CPS bill, there's the cable bill, there's the mortgage bill, and they're all over here on the side of my screen. And they kind of go in that order. And way down under other, it says church. I don't know what that means exactly. Do well, you, you know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and let's just say I'm not exactly the widow. It's not the first thing on my list. It's not the first, I don't hardly write checks anymore, but it's not the first check I write. It's, it's at the bottom of the list, kind of when I get done with the rest of the stuff. So I just want to think about that. And to be honest, on my budget sheet, um, with the one I write out, it follows the same pattern as the email sheet. I've got the mortgage at the top, then I've got the light bill, and I've got all the other bills, and somewhere down towards the bottom when it gets into like um, other, and it says uh, payment to the gym, and uh, savings for vacation, and uh, extra money for Christmas. Somewhere down in that part of the statement it says uh, church. Anyway, I'm just thinking. I'm just saying. So that's the one thing I, I wanted to share from the story. Somehow for this lady, um, who didn't have a whole lot of anything, uh, the first thing she wanted to do with her money was to remember who she was in, in relationship to the temple, who she was in relationship to Judaism and to her faith, and who she was before God, so that the very first thing she would do when she has her money was to drop something into the temple. It was first, not somewhere down under other. And then Jesus is most excited. This is the second thing I got from the story. Jesus is most interested in the fact that for her, what she gave was a tremendous proportion of what she had. Because he says, you know, all the people with abundance and discretion and extra money, they were giving lots of large sums. But then he, he tells the disciples, you know, she gave so much more because she didn't have any extra. And that she gave out of her center, really, out of her non-discretion. So proportionally, she gave much more than the other people did. So she kind of gave first and she gave a large proportion. That whole proportionality thing is kind of tricky too. I mean some people aren't even into money and to numbers enough to even uh, have a stab at what proportion of their budget goes to what things. Like how much of my uh, income uh, goes to various things. It's like, I'm not, I don't know, I don't do that many calculations. <laughs> like how much is my, what proportion is my house, and what proportion is my vacation, and what proportion is uh, Christmas gifts, and I don't do that much math. But uh, on occasion I have, just on to do an exercise. And so I know what proportion of money I give to uh, the church. And it's probably around four or five percent, something like that. And 
Of course, I give some money to other people, other things. So the amount of money I give away is higher than that, but it's not a gigantic proportion. It's just uh, almost like under other. So, having said that, I don't really do guilt sermons. But when you read the story, it does make you ask questions. It's like, hmm, I wonder about that. I want to just throw this last caveat in before uh, we wind up for today. I don't just associate God with, with just Christianity. I think God might even be bigger than the Christian faith. So it also means that I don't equate God with the Episcopal Church. God is bigger than the church, and he's, which means, of course, and God is even bigger than St. Andrew's as a congregation. So I know that. God is bigger than Christianity. God is bigger than the Episcopal Church. God is more than St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. But having said that, everything that we believe in general has to be acted out somehow specifically. Everything that is universal has to somehow become particular. Or in more common language, somewhere, rubber has to meet the road. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so for me, while I know that God is bigger than Christianity, and God is bigger than the Episcopal Church, and God is bigger than St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, for David, where the rubber has to meet the road, where I express my faith, where I uh, express my commitment, where I express my love for this God who is very big happens to be here. You know? <laughs> this is where it happens. I don't give generically to the God who is the church universal of the universe. And I mean, this is it. <laughs> I mean, God, God is expressed here. God is, is expressed in the Episcopal Church. God is part of the Christian faith. And for me to express myself somewhere, this is it. <laughs> so, I leave you with those uh, reflections on the story. Jesus was most impressed that for this woman who has no discretion, uh, this was her God and her faith and her love of God and her tradition, her community. This was the first check she was writing, so to speak. It wasn't down under other. And by proportionality, the big proportion she gave, Jesus said, that, that's what makes her really special. Uh, proportionally, she gave uh, out of her negative balance, practically. And I wonder for myself, I mean, we have to express our faith and our love and our commitment and our passion for who we are and for our God and for our religion and for our faith somewhere very particular. It can't just be kind of generally I believe in that vaguely. And so for me, because this is my community here at St. Andrews, this is how I express myself. And maybe I'll try and look at that list and see if I shouldn't put church out of the other category and put it on the top of the budget. And I'll look at that proportion thing and see how much it really costs me. <laughs> you know? Does it cost me uh, as much as an extra vacation? Or does it cost me as much as a different car payment? Or does it cost me as much as um, a rehab I want to do in my house? I mean, what does it cost me? It costs her everything. So it's just an interesting question. What is the equivalent? What does it cost us? What's the proportion? She thought at the top of her list was her, her faith and her God. And for her, she was going to put it at the top, and it would be a, a big part for everything off her budget. So mostly what I did today was just talk about me. 
And you all can apply these uh, two ideas to your own life as you see fit. I offer this to you in God's name. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.